Last month, I did a video on my Toshiba Satellite A65-S126, a pretty weird laptop from around 20 years ago. For that video, I recovered the system using the Toshiba recovery media that would have shipped with it to get the factory Windows install and its original drivers and software and everything. And I thought maybe to someone that would be interesting. And conveniently, I recorded the footage of this thinking maybe I would use it someday. So. That's what today's video is. That's right, it's another one of these videos. I'm sure someone's happy. If you didn't see the original video on this, well, you should, but I'll quickly run through the specs. It's an Intel Celeron D clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. It has 512 megs of RAM, a 60 gig hard drive, DVD drive, ATI, mobility, Radeon graphics, and a 1024 by 768 display. Oh, and also it has Wi-Fi. It's okay for the time, but that's about all I have to say in this video. Now the Windows install on this thing is a bit of an interesting situation because it's actually still the original installation that would have come with the computer, but the original owner did not wipe it at all. There was a lot of personal files and a ton of programs that were still left on this computer. Unfortunately, this system does not have a recovery partition on the hard drive, which made this kind of inconvenient. Instead, how this is done is it's just a single DVD, which obviously I didn't get with the computer, but I found this image uploaded to the Internet Archive after I got the computer. I only just found out about it recently. Now this is where I have a bit of a confession to make. Don't worry, it's not like I'm about to admit to anything serious, but while I was editing this video and working on two other videos at the same time, my SD card decided to corrupt itself, and I hadn't taken the footage off the card. Meaning, I lost a lot of footage, including the recovery process for this video. I was able to recover some of the footage. I was able to recover the recovery process, which is an amazing sentence. But I didn't get all of the footage back, which kind of made this video a bit weird. So instead, enjoy this re-recorded clip that I had to hastily record last minute so that this video would be complete. Fortunately, it kind of doesn't really matter anyway because as it turns out, the recovery process on this machine is actually quite similar to that of my satellite A665 that I did a recovery on in January. It's actually the same program for the most part, except instead of booting into a Windows 7 preboot environment, this boots into a Windows XP preboot environment or in this case, the Toshiba Pre-Install Applications and Drivers Recovery System. That's quite a mouthful. Like I said, this does not recover anything to the hard drive. It's doing all the files straight off the disk, which is a bit inconvenient, though I guess I can understand from a disk space perspective. But it does mean that it takes quite a bit of time to load. Now the first thing that pops up is this Toshiba Recovery Information screen saying basic things like how it's going to restore the operating system and you should back up your data and keep it plugged in over power. Now the interesting thing about this is this is actually the background for this. This is still loading by the way. It's just that while it's loading, they just show you the information for this to save time. Frankly, that's kind of clever actually. Eventually the Toshiba recovery wizard pops up and like I said, this is very similar to that of the Satellite A665, just an older version of the program. But it has a lot of similar options to that machine's recovery process. First of all, our options are either to do the recovery of the original operating system, or you can erase the hard disk. Something I wish the original owners of this computer did. Then our options are either to just recover it to out of box state, recover it without messing with the hard drive at all, or to do a custom sized partition, which I actually kind of appreciate because sometimes with dual booting, it makes things much easier. And then as it says, going to delete the partitions and to confirm if you want to continue. I think you get the gist of this.
and that's it. This is a pretty easy process, actually. It took quite a bit of time. This computer's DVD drive is kinda slow, but it gets the job done, I guess. Now, I thought it was going to boot right into the out-of-box experience, but it actually booted up right to the desktop. I thought at first it was just going to skip the out-of-box experience, and this was just the install. But it turns out it had to apply a final configuration. It didn't say what it was doing, so I don't know, maybe it was tweaking settings, but it definitely took its fair share of time, that's for sure. While it was doing this, it also ran sysprep, which I suppose is a good thing. And after one more reboot, it's pretty much done. So yeah, that was a fairly easy process. I was kind of expecting it to be like the A665 where it had to reinstall all the programs and everything in a separate phase of setup, but this just recovered everything and then was done for the most part. Fairly easy. Of course, I've cut a lot of the load times out of this because this computer is very slow. But after probably about 45 minutes, we're at the Outbacks experience, which isn't great, but it's not bad either. I would just kind of say it's average. So yeah, thank you for purchasing this computer from Toshiba featuring Microsoft Windows XP. The Toshiba logo in the top is giant. Not that that matters, but it was just kind of funny. Something I noticed that was kind of funny is that just like the eMachines computer, this one actually doesn't have a Toshiba EULA at all. Just the Windows one, which is kind of interesting. Otherwise, it was just kind of the typical Windows XP questions. There wasn't anything really obvious. It's not like some computers where they start throwing internet offers and stuff like that at you. The only thing I saw was this little thing asking to register with Toshiba for a discount coupon at shoptoshiba.com. What caught my eye though was their wording. Failure to complete and submit this product registration form will not diminish your rights under Toshiba's tenor limited warranty. I don't know, the way it was worded at the beginning made it sound like you'd be in trouble. Also, the privacy statement is kind of funny. Toshiba America Information Systems has created this privacy statement in order to demonstrate our firm commitment to privacy. I don't know, their wording just kind of screams, we didn't actually want to write this, but we had no choice. Otherwise, like I said, that's it. There weren't any internet offers, which is kind of a shame because they're always funny. And it didn't even need to do a reboot after this was done. So yeah, this is a fairly easy recovery process. Now the found new hardware wizard did show up because I have a replacement Wi-Fi card in this computer from the original one. So it doesn't have the right drivers and everything, which that's fine, I can install that later. I was expecting that to happen. Something I noticed right away is this thing actually appears to use the silver theme in XP out of the box, which I guess makes sense. It matches the wallpaper and the Palmerston laptop, but I just thought that was kind of an interesting decision. I've never really seen that before. Also, while I was in here, I got to the screensaver tab where I accidentally found this thing actually has sc screensavers on it, including the Toshiba speech system, which <laughs> I don't even, this is, this is the weirdest screensaver I think I've ever seen. It's fun. I, I give it that. It's kind of quirky. I guess. I have no idea what this is. I didn't even know this was here. There's also this photo base screensaver, which I don't know the point of. And there's also this thing called config free, which I have no idea what this is. This screensaver makes it seem way cooler than it actually is. There's no audio, by the way, which is weird because you would think it would be. Also, what kind of drives me nuts is it's only 640 by 480, but all right. It's just kind of random, I guess. As far as icons on a desktop, we have quite a few. Toshiba Direct Shortcut, some kind of thing for the audio driver, Toshiba Console, the fax console in Windows, for some reason. The thing is, it's not labeled, it just says fax, so I didn't know what this was at first. We also have Adobe Reader 5, AT&T WorldNet service, oh good. America Online, QuickTime Player, 
InterVideo Win DVD, this thing called Notebook Maximizer, Napster, Quicken 2004, Software Upgrades, Register with Toshiba, Easy Firewall Setup, Norton Antivirus 2004, Toshiba Access, User Guide, ArcSoft Products, Internet Explorer, MSN Explorer, and Windows Media Player. There's also a ton of tray icons, which is a good sign. This thing has Microsoft Interactive Training, AOL 9, which wasn't really that surprising, because this thing does have a modem in it. Some ArcSoft trial software on this machine, which I don't really care to use at all. The aforementioned AT&T WorldNet service, which again makes sense because this has a modem on it. This DVD-RAM driver, which I'd have to guess is for reading DVD-RAM disc because this can't write to anything. InterVideo Win DVD, specifically Win DVD 5 for Toshiba, because this has a DVD drive, so that's fair enough to include, I suppose. Java Web Start, which is really fun. Office 2003, which is a bit surprising to include more than just the home version. This is actually Office Standard 2003. I thought it was a trial, but it turns out they literally just preloaded it and expected you to have a key. Interestingly, you can reinstall Works in Office though right from the hard drive which is kind of cool. Also, dubs come with Microsoft Works, specifically Works version 7. So I guess if you didn't have an Office key, maybe Office was like an add-on when you bought the computer and you were supposed to put the key in. I don't know. It also has Napster in it, which is cool. It's a name I haven't heard of in a very long time. Of course, you can't have an OEM machine without Norton and a virus being on it. This is the 2004 edition. Probably going to uninstall this immediately because this is probably a virus. Next we have this program called Notebook Maximizer, which I have no idea what this is, but apparently it's actually a system information kind of thing. When you first open it, you get asked this prompt for your user type. You can select between Road Warrior, if you travel a lot, Home stu or Student, if you are a useless piece of shit all day, or Small Business, which, all right. But it's actually kind of a neat program. It tells you information about your computer and it gives you helpful shortcuts to accessories and software and other things you might want. The A665 has a similar program, but not quite the same thing. There's also Quicken 2004, new user edition, because of course. We also have QuickTime Player, which is nice to have. We also have Real Player, because why wouldn't you have that? This is Real Player 8 Basic, so the ancient version from 2000 that doesn't have a working theme on XP. We have some stuff for the Realtek Ethernet driver as well as the audio driver, Sonic DLA and Record Now, a ton of Toshiba applications including that config free thing from earlier as well as the speech system, and a ton of utilities, because of course. Including the Toshiba console where you have shortcuts to all these thingies. This also includes the Toshiba hardware setup, which I always like. You can change the settings of your computer just without having to actually go into the BIOS. It's kind of cool, I guess. There's also this software upgrades program, which appears to be a way to update the programs that came with it, I think. I don't know. It doesn't work anyway. I don't have an internet connection. And we also have Acrobat Reader 5. Not sure why it's this old version, because Acrobat Reader 6 was out at this point, but that's what they went with, I guess. Now, despite all the software being on the machine, we're actually doing pretty good on disk space, just around 6 gigabytes, which is pretty good. Also, I didn't know this at first, but it turns out if you keep the original CD in the drive and attempt to run it on Windows, instead of just being useless and not showing anything, it actually does come up with a recovery window where you can reinstall pretty much all the applications and drivers that came with it, which is pretty handy. There's also the Toshiba Help and Support Center, including Toshiba Support, where you can choose Freedom. Here's the system properties, by the way. Like I said, this is Windows XP Service Pack 1, so this will need some updating. And yeah, obviously all the drivers are set up with the exception of the Wi-Fi card, which is a good opportunity to go ahead and run Snappy Driver Installer on this thing to go ahead and update the drivers. There actually really weren't that many that need to be updated anyway, but I figured I would just go ahead and update them all because it can't hurt. 
I could just go and grab the driver for this Wi-Fi card with something else, but I couldn't have been bothered to do that. Of course, it's a bit slow on this computer because this thing doesn't have the most RAM in the world. 512 megs for snappy driver slot really isn't a lot. Next, I went through the process of installing all the updates on this thing, which was a lot of fun. There were a lot. And uh, here we go. This is the Windows install after I've done all my work to it for the most part. Updating this computer definitely slowed it down quite a bit. I suppose this thing would have not necessarily been bad when it was new, but with all of the stuff on this computer, I can see how this thing would have gotten pretty slow. Although it also didn't help that Windows Search was constantly trying to index the drive, making it even slower. But yeah, I basically installed all the updates on this, including Windows XP Search Pack 3, Internet Explorer 8, Windows Media Player 11, and everything else that it would have wanted. Now after all that, we're currently looking at just under 200 megs of RAM free. Which isn't bad, I guess. I did disable a lot of the startup items, which definitely helps this thing's resource usage a lot. Finally, the free disk space definitely took a hit. It took like 10 gigs for all the updates. We're looking at about 15 gigs used, which isn't uncommon. Fortunately, this thing has a 60 gig hard drive, so it's fine, but definitely something to note. So yeah, this was a pretty easy process. I'll leave this media linked in the description just because you never know. I don't believe this can be installed on a virtual machine, but that's also not really my expertise. But yeah, very easy actually as it's probably supposed to be.